Well, let me start out by saying, you know, still very disappointed anytime you lose a home game, especially. But I really spent a lot of time over the weekend and uh, looking at things. And as dumb as it sounds, I'm coming up with the glass half full instead of half empty. And the only reason I am, when you lose a couple games that you think you should win, um, you usually relate it to effort-related things. And uh, as I go through all the stats and try to watch all the film that I have, um, our effort-related things are ranked in the top two or three of the league. I mean, we're top three in field goal percentage defense, top two in three-point percentage defense, our assist to turnovers, things that get sloppy and, you know, casual that you normally go with losing or rebounding is an effort-related stat. We're one by far every rebounding stat we are. I mean, it really comes down to we haven't shot the ball great from the three, but it's even that is in the middle of the pack. Uh, we might be the worst free throw shooting team right now that we've ever had. I went through every team. Um, five times we shot in the 60s. 65-8, I think, was the worst. 69-8 uh, was the highest one. I think we were... Five times we were 74 or higher, and we've been probably as a program probably 71, 2, 3 percent over the year. If we did that, we're sitting here, you know, with two losses. If we just shot 65 percent, we're sitting here with four losses. And if you think I'm making too big a deal about the free throw shooting, um, I kind of go by the theory that uh, if there is a problem, keeping your mouth shut about it isn't the way to fix it. You better address the problem and you better deal with the fact that it's a problem. You know, uh, there's no cures from cancer to alcoholism to, you know, whatever there is by, you know, a cavity in your teeth by ignoring them. So, yeah, we've got an issue that we've missed. Uh, I think we figured out that three games, we make one more free throw, we win three. And that... There's no excuse. That's our fault. But there is something to feel confident about that if we could get this thing turned around. And uh, we got some issues, you know. Gavin Schilling is now shooting 65%. He's moved up. But we've lost a couple of these games. Some of our best free throw shooters missing free throws. Guys that have shot 82% last year, 70-some percent last year. They were shooting 83% for the year this year. Um why it's happened, I don't know. Uh, I looked at all the shots we've taken. Uh, some of the goals we had, try to get 60 shots a game up. We're getting 58 some. That's a positive. Turnovers have been down, some of the lowest in my career. That's a positive. Um, our, our defensive field goal percentage overall is under 40%. That's a positive. How our rebounding's been, what it was, it is, I don't know because – we're not a very big team. This year we have some huge teams in our league. And if you really took out the one Maryland game at home when they out-rebounded us by 16, we're probably plus 6, 7 over the next closest guy. As it is, we're, I think, plus 3.5, 4, 4.5, four something like that, or team. So uh, we're addressing the problem the best we can. We're, we're working on it. Um, somebody compared it today to uh, Tiger Woods having the yips and in, in, uh, chipping. I um, shouldn't say it, but my board member, Joe Ferguson, has the yips and chipping, so I, I get to witness that firsthand once in a while. But uh, it's nothing that's funny. It's nothing that we're not addressing. It's nothing that we haven't talked about. But sooner or later, too, you got to go there and you got to make the free throws. And um, so that's one area we've really tried to address. The other is our three-point shooting. We think we've taken some good shots, and uh, the percentage of shots we've taken, we think we should be shooting a higher percent. And we have addressed one other area that I think is a concern, and that's we've taken some bad shots, uh, a couple of four shots in key times of a game late in a game. So those three areas we're working on, um, you know, you work on it, you got Sunday to have a practice, and you have one today, and you play another game. So it's not like you can solve the problems of the world, but I'm not going to sit here and act like it's not a problem. I'm not going to sit here and 
and uh, not talk about it and think maybe it'll go away. Um, players know it. They've been told it. They've been shown it. Um, we know it. You know it. Uh, normally, when you lose some games, though, there's a lot worse problems than the missed free throw. And so if that gets resolved moderately, um, it's going to be the difference in a lot of uh, wins potentially down the road. Questions? Tom, specifically on the free throws, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like that's something that gets to be more mental at times. Is, is this just a matter of somebody's got to, in a game, step up and do it for maybe to kind of break through? Because it, yeah, you know, I, the mechanics I would, are good, you can practice all day, right? I would agree. You know, Gavin's probably got the worst mechanics, and he's improved the most. If you looked at numbers from the beginning to the end, and he's working on it morning, noon, and night with Mike. BJ, if you watch him in practice right now, he's got the worst percentage. He has shit, shot the ball very, very, very well from the free throw line in practice. And uh, But I, I, I kind of worry about my big three that should be able to make them. I mean, you know, what you do then, instead of them shooting 70 or 72, they got to shoot 80 or 85, which they're all capable of doing. And uh, – yeah, you need a breakthrough game where you make some incre- you, know, you make some important free throws. I mean, we lost three games, guys, where we shot 30, 38, and 42% from the line, and we lost them by one or two. Somewhere there's good news there. Somewhere that means that defensively we're doing the job. Uh, we took a team that was pretty hot right now from the three. They shot 29% against us. Um, I really would struggle if it was effort-related things because I think that is what we've prided this program on. It's not effort-related things. There is a little, you know, right now we're not mentally, I guess, as tough as you need to be. I voiced that early in the year, too. And uh, some of that is just going to have to have some guys spending more and more time, and I don't know. Um, It's going to happen. It's going to come. Uh, there's good enough free throw shooters to shoot well enough. There's good enough three point shooters to shoot well enough. And like everybody else, you hope it doesn't come too late. But I, I felt better after I spent the day looking at every stat in America and tried to look at the things that we wanted to accomplish at the beginning of the year, the number of shots we got, even, even getting to the line. Do you remember having those conversations in the end of December? We were getting there 12, 13 times a game, and why are we never shooting free throws? Well, we weren't aggressive enough. Now we're getting almost 20 a game. And uh, so we're, we're making some progress in some areas. It's just I thought I never thought we'd be a very good defensive team. I did not think we'd be a great rebounding team this year. We're doing a better job in those two areas. It's, it's one major area that's haunting us. The other one is a little bit the three-point shooting, and maybe the third one is – a little bit of shot selection at critical times. Tom, one of the things you said Saturday is that you, you brought guys in to address the free throw issue. What sorts of different things have you tried with this team to, to break it out? Uh, we've shot in the morning. We've shot before practice. We've tried to shoot more during. Last night we made them make 10 in a row, 12 in a row to be under some pressure. Um, you know, I, to be honest with you, I think there's some guys that have been too casual about it. And uh, it's unexcusable that, you know, we've had some guards that have sh- shot 80% last year. They're shooting in the mid-60s. I mean, we're not talking we need five more free throws. We probably one more in three games, just one more free throw made. Uh, you know, shoot. If we shot 65%, in my calculations, easily we have three more wins maybe four. And the reason I say that is I'm not counting the front ends of the one and one when you re- really would get another free throw. Uh, you know, we, we play at Maryland. We're down 12 at halftime. We're five for 13 and miss two front ends of the one and one. That's five for 15. That's a 10 point swing. Um, it doesn't make any difference. You got to be able to kick a field goal. You got to be able to make a pass. You got to be able to, uh, you know, make baskets. That's all part of the different sports there are. But in the effort-related things that we're doing, we're probably doing a phenomenal job. I, I give them credit, players, because it's depressing to miss those free throws and have to bounce back 
And, you know, we've missed some layups. I mean, our shooting has not been what it needs to be in these games. Now, the first 12, 14 games it was. Why? Confidence is probably a big reason. Sticking with the free throws, Denzel told us after the game that he talked to Bryn and said, you're going to make him, and went to you and said, Bryn should shoot him. Were you going to go with Bryn either way, or were you going to go with Denzel? You know, I probably would have gone with Denzel, only because um, um, I just think Denzel has, you know, been through the wars and, and all the things. Uh, but I've also looked at things when, I, you know, you kind of listen to the uh, key players that I think I know have the best interest of the program in mind, and uh, and I think he felt that that Brandon had just hit one or two free throws, and um, you know that was a, a suggestion that I was able to either take or not take, and uh, I took it. So the the bottom line is I make the choice, and I made the choice. I made it with an educated opinion, but. Uh, Maybe not as much a heartfelt one. Uh, I have a lot of faith in Denzel Valentine. I, I really do. And um, but I got a lot of faith in Travis Trice, and he was an 82 percent shooter last year, and you know he missed a couple too. So uh, you know, maybe it's bad picking. You know, the Maryland game, we we had a situation, and we missed a key free throw in that in the same way, a technical foul late, and. Um, how did the, you know? Just it's the way it is. You, you make some decisions that don't work out, but as long as they're educated, I think you know Bryn's still one of the best free throw shooters, three point shooters on our team. Tom, I was going to ask you if if you were satisfied that your team competes hard enough, and I think you answered that with your opening statement. But is effort and competing hard enough to win fall under the same umbrella? If you know what well, I mean. Well, you know. You've been in sports a long time, and I can tell by the way you asked it, and I don't mean this negatively, that probably everybody looks at, are they playing hard enough? Are they doing this right? Are they doing that right? Because you lose. When you lose, you know, are you running the offense good enough? We're getting to the line more. We're getting open looks. Um, we're getting more shots than I think any team in the league. We're, our offensive rebound percentage is off the charts. Yeah, I think we're playing hard enough. I, I really do. I mean, I'm never satisfied with that. But don't let a missed shot pile on to all the other things. That's not the way it is. Do we look undisciplined? Do we look? Uh, I don't see that. You know, um, Doug Herner, my old man of the staff, he he always says, you know, if the shot goes in, you can do everything wrong, and and. You could sell it that you're the greatest offensive team. And if the shot doesn't go in, you can do everything right. And you look like the worst offensive team. So um, normally I'm a guy of glass half empty, to be very blunt about it. Um, I just think this is so easy to remedy. It's not easy to make a poor rebounding team a good rebounding team. It's not easy to take a poor defensive team and make it a good defensive team. Um, there's some teams in our league that have perennially been at the top two or three defensive teams year in, year out that are on the bottom. Their offense is so good they make up for it. Will it catch up with them? I don't know. But we've usually been pretty solid. And I, I think what I was most amazed with is how well we shot free throws over the year because I've never been happy with it. And Matt and I were looking through our, our sheet today and, God, the number of times we shot 77, 76, 77, 74, 73. I mean, that's very good team free throw shooting. And uh, I think if we would have shot that, we'd have one loss. I asked if you were so angry with your nickel I was. Because I don't want to, you know what I did is, I, I had one of those moments um, that I had to, do I want to make public our problems when you never do? But I didn't want to make it all free throw shooting that day or jump shooting because I know that mentally gets in their head. And I decided over the weekend, you better get out of it. You better get over it. You know, it is mentally in your head. They're not bad free throw shooters. And if that's too much pressure, you should have picked a different level. You know, I went to Division II. There was no, no pressure. You know, they're going to have to live with it. And I can't hide it. I can't hide it. I mean, you look at the stats – 
which all you can do. You look at the game, which all you can do. You look at everything, which everybody can do. And uh, we're shooting the worst we've ever shot. You know, I don't know. Maybe it'll break. Maybe right now we're we're working on a forget Izzo era, Heathcote era, Ganakis era. We might, you know, and that's ridiculous. And I cannot sugarcoat that in any way, shape, or form. You know, and uh, I don't know what my evaluation would be in football, but if if we miss 15 extra points, um, sooner or later you got to say you got to make those. You got to step up and make them. And uh, this isn't a hundred percent shot like that, but for the some of the guys missing them, it's an eighty percent shot. There should be eight out of ten shots made. So we got to coach it better. We got to work harder on it. We got to spend more time on it. Um, I was as mad as I've ever been. I'll be very blunt and honest with that because I think it's ridiculous what we're going through because I do think we're doing enough other good things that this team, it's not a great team. It's right where we said, but, you know, two or three losses that would have been wins if you look at what we shot against Texas Southern, if you look at what we shot against Maryland, you know, here, the chances to win. Uh, You know, you look at that game. Uh, with chance to win. You look at Notre Dame, with just one makes a win. <laughs> if, if you win three more games and you're 18 and whatever, five, you're ranked in the top 15 in the country. And we've played in other areas good enough to be at that record in a lot of other areas, if you check the stats. And... Uh, so we got to find a way to do a better job in this area because it is killing us. This question is sacrilegious under your tenure, but I have seen you with great talented teams and teams that maybe weren't talented but never questioned the mental toughness. You've got great kids, but, Tom, not only from game to game, I've seen it from possession to possession and half to half where they're mentally tough and not You've never had to really deal with this, so would you have to reach out to other people? How do you, because because you have not re- dealt with it since you've been here like this? I would say that's a fair question. I would say that uh, when you struggle, if you're a shooter and you struggle, you lose confidence, which kind of permeates throughout all parts of your game. Um, if you're Travis Walton, who's back right now for a couple days, or Mateen Cleaves, if you don't rely on something and you're one of the quarterbacks of the team, it doesn't affect you as much. When you do rely on that, it affects you more. And I think it's I think it's affect Travis some. You know, it has. And and uh, so then that permeates throughout. I, I don't I definitely think we're not as physical a team. Um, not because of the rules, it just we're just not quite as physical of a team. And uh so sometimes brute strength physicality leads to mental physic you know mental uh, approach too and and uh, so I'd say that's that's true, but I think you just said it we've won with less talented teams we've won with more talented teams mentally you know it's hard i that's a harder one to rate. I can look at a guy and see how strong he is I can watch him play and see how tough he is. You don't know what's going through a kid's mind mentally. But, you know, we're 15-8. and eight. We've lost some big games. We've lost some tough games. Another area that if you think it's just Michigan State, you know, Miami goes in there and beats them by 20. Somebody wasn't mentally or physically tough. If you look at our league, I mean, Maryland, who beat us twice, have been beaten by 20. We've lost one game in a blowout, one game. And uh, so we got to be doing something right, I mean, to be knocking on the door all the time. But I think we all know one thing we're doing wrong, one thing. And is part of the mental toughness part of that? Might be. It goes back to Twitter. It goes back to what these kids are hearing. It goes back to all those things. Are they able to handle those things? Are people all over the country able to handle those things? Why are the swings? Why is Iowa here and here? Why... You know, um, Maryland. Maryland. I mean, there's a lot of teams. I mean, we're one of the few teams that hasn't had a 
three or four blowout games. Indiana has. I mean, it's just the way it is right now, and um, that doesn't make it easier for us. I'm just trying to figure it all out, like you said. I'm trying to look at this whole thing and saying, you know, do we have to adjust a new, some new things? Do I got to, you know, look at who do I got that is mentally and physically tough? Does he got to play more, you know? I'm looking at a lot of things to help, but I'm, I'm really not panicking because the problem we have is Brandon Dawson going to be an 80% free throw shooter tomorrow? No. It's just about everybody else capable of shooting much better from the line than they are. Yes. And they've done it in the past. And, and that's why I'm being optimistic on this because I think if it happens and you can look at some games that has happened, we've won. Tom, Javon had the boot on Saturday. Is that going to be a long-term thing, do you think? Yep, I'll know more probably in a couple days, but I think Javon might be done for the year, which has been another big thorn in my side because he was the one guy that brought some toughness. And uh, and I won't know for sure until we get back but uh, on Wednesday or Thursday, but it just doesn't look like it's it's healed and it just doesn't seem right. He's got pain there. And uh, they're trying to do everything they can to find out. But uh, I don't like where it's headed. And I don't like he's definitely going to be out for a couple weeks. And uh, that is almost 100% for sure. Follow up on that. I was changing my question. Is it anything? I think earlier you said it's different than Russell's. But, I mean, are there any similarities with that situation in this one? No, no, no. He just, he had a stress fracture. I mean, Russell had... I mean, I don't know all the medical terms. He just had a mess, you know. To, yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be good to say, but you're, you're, you're right. And and uh, no, this this isn't. This is just like Corey's and just like Chris's and just like many other players we've had. And, uh, you know, what you don't know is every kid responds differently. Some it takes six weeks. We waited an extra week. Some, depending on how their gait is, how they walk, um, you know, what I didn't like is I, I never felt – he always seemed to be favoring it. Sometimes when you do that, you start walking differently and, and it creates a problem. So I don't see any long-term effect, if you say long-term, a career like Russell's, but I definitely see a short-term effect. Well, it's a big effect on us. But, you know, it's hard to cry about injuries because a lot of teams have them, but it's also – I mean, there's a kid that I told you from day one I was starting. And he was a kid that brought some some toughness to a team that maybe doesn't have as much of that. Um, and he knows how to play. I mean, uh, you know, the one game he was healthy for was at Nebraska, and he gets nine points and he does some things. and But he hasn't been able to practice or do anything. We haven't been able to play with him. So that's been a tough, tough deal on us and no different. I mean, other teams have injuries, but some of those teams that have injuries have a lot poorer records than us, too, because that's what happens in basketball when you only got, you know, maybe eight players in your playing group. You lose one or two. It can have a serious impact. Just clarify, he can't have an MRI. No. He can't have an MRI because he's got a screw in there. So he's having, uh, you know, x-rays, bone scans. Uh, I don't know, you know. I'm I, Talk to the doctors, talk to the trainers. I'm so sick of talking about injuries and and not knowing what they are and trying to guess, you know. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Tom, I think you guys play Northwestern tomorrow. Are they uh, maybe a deceptive one and nine team, just given all the close losses and the way they've competed? Yeah, I think they're the most deceptive one and nine team maybe in the country if you look at it that way because. They've been in every game. They had Maryland down 16 at Maryland. Um, they've played everybody just about really well. They have uh, they run a very good offense, very structured, patient. Um, they've been solid defensively. they got good players now. they got some guys back, too, that were, were her Cobb is now back 100%. They started a kid named Lindsey who beat out another kid that was starting. So... Uh, Ola, according to Bo Ryan, is the most improved player in the league, and watching on film, he might be. So, uh, yeah, it's a very good team, and uh, and I'm sure hungry for a win. 
Two questions quickly with Best. There'll be no shot at a medical on him, will there? You know, I don't think so. I don't know that. Um, I mean, there's rules, right. and by the base of the rule, but there's exceptions. I mean, the poor kid just hasn't, you know, I mean, if there's ever a kid who deserves another, it would be him, but it's got to do with the second half of the year or the first half. Percentage of games wouldn't be a problem. It's just when they were played. So uh, that would be something for our doctors and our compliance people to look into. Yeah, but I think you'd get an idea uh, whether, you know, I, I don't know what the precedence of that is. I don't even know exactly what the numbers are. I just feel bad for the kid, and I won't know whether it's for the rest of the season until Wednesday or Thursday, too. Second part, to get the question off your woes, they've come out with new announcements for checking ch rule changes in the NIT now. The, the, the joke half circle is now going to go to four feet in the NIT to see if that helps, taking the 30 sec 35 second clock down to 30. Billis came out and said college basketball is in trouble. We don't need to do experimenting. Take the clock to 24 now. I just would like your thoughts on the changes. Would you like it moved to 24? Your thoughts? Jay wants it to 24. 24 said that the game has become hold the ball and then play in the last 10 seconds. God, I got enough problems inside to cure college basketball, but I do think he's right. I think there are some trouble, but I, I think we caused our own. You know, I saw more fake charges the other day, guys flopping, uh, trying to deceive officials. Um, we, we deserve that. We had a chance to get it like the NBA. The only thing I don't agree with, I think our game should be identical to the NBA in a lot of ways except the shot clock. I, just, I don't think we have that many. I think there'll be too many bad shots. I think 30 would be great. I think you go from 30. I mean, I, I coached over in Australia with a pro team and um, in the Goodwill games, and I couldn't believe the difference between 35 and 24. I think 24 would lend to more bad shots. I think they thought, you know, get rid of hand checking and all this touchy-feely stuff, and players are going to be able to move more. What you have is you have more players on the bench. You have more teams playing zone. We better watch what we're doing. And I, I guess I give them credit that they're trying it in a real setting, the NIT, meaning uh, when you're doing an exhibition game and you're playing Division two schools, it doesn't have the same credibility. So I guess I give them credit on that. How we ever came up with that two-inch circle uh, blows me away. I mean, that, that was... I just, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to rip anybody, but I uh, that that made absolutely no sense to me and has done nothing for the game. Um, I, I I always thought if the NBA plays on the average of a hundred and some games a year, if you talk about exhibition playoff, you know, maybe 110, 120, and they got the greatest players. They got the greatest officials. They got the greatest everything. I I don't see why we shouldn't learn from them. We're, we've got this. We've got this. I don't know what it is. We bad feeling or whatever. Like we don't want to be the NBA. This is where the greatest players, coaches, and and uh, officials are. So why don't we want to learn from them? And uh, that's all I think we should be doing is learning from them. And then figuring out, because of different sizes and that, or speed, which is now caught up, what should be different that doesn't uh, go along with it. But the only one to me, I wish we, I wish we could move the ball uh, on a timeout late. That would make the game more exciting. That would get more, uh, you know, more strategy. Um, I just think everything they do is good. I think it's good. I think the college game is good. But I think what they do is been addressed a hundred thousand times and fine tuned to the best they can fine tune it. And they want people being able to go in and get a dunk and excitement. That opens the game up. So they did get rid of hand checking to a certain extent, like we did. But then we let them take a charge in there and kill somebody. And they don't do that. Uh, so yeah, bad day to talk about all that stuff. I had enough problems on my hands, but but in fairness to the question um, I think Jay's right on some of it. I think, you know, we're changing a lot, but I wouldn't go to 24. I'd go to 30. 
I think it gives you a chance. I think 24 would be more bad shots. So one thing there is in the league is percentages. Now you might get more reps or more shot attempts, but the percentages have gone, you know, go down in the league. They don't shoot as good a percentage because they're taking more bad shots. With, Couple uh, more. Uh, with um, Bessa's injury, uh, what do you envision? If- uh, what do you envision for Alvin Ellis going forward? He played 18 minutes on uh, yeah, Saturday. Yeah, he's going to have to play more. And, and you know, and as we all know, he was injured until the middle, late part of December. So, you know, part of his problems are, you know, he's got to spend more time on the game. Part of his problems are he was injured and missed a lot of time too. But uh, he and Tom are going to be even more important. We're going to have to get them more time in there. And, uh, you know, there's even some thoughts on – if we can get a little bit more out of a couple other guys, whether it be sometimes play with two bigs, sometimes play with Marvin on maybe playing uh, BJ at some three. Uh, there's some things I got to look at with this because I really thought he would be back at the start of the Big Ten season. And uh, in my mind, that was going to help us in a lot of ways against certain teams and didn't work out. So, uh, you know, you go to the Next plan. Okay, um, it seems like just confidence-wise, you guys haven't had a real confident showing. Maybe Rutgers, but that, that week against Indian and Iowa. I know Trice obviously had that huge game in Iowa. How much of your focus in terms of getting everyone's confidence back is getting his back? And and uh, why do you think it's been this long? Even when you've had you've you've had some wins in there, but it just seems like the flow isn't there. Well, it. I think, to be honest with you, it all comes back to whether the ball goes in the basket, you know, because the flow has been there defensively in 90% of those games. The flow has been there with our turnovers in 90% of those games. The flow has been there in our rebounding in 90% of those games. Um, the flow has not been there with our shooting, and and he has struggled. And, uh, you know, it's been – I don't know. I mean, after those two games, he's, he's struggled some. He's gone through – tough period you know and he thought for a while he was a little bit beat up and maybe we playing him too much and you look at the different things but as I always say you know if, if the head isn't right the body gets affected and uh, that's putting pressure on but listen if we're going to win I, I've said it a hundred times as frustrating as it is to hear if you got most teams have two or three great players or best players, call them best players. And then there's a significant drop-off. I don't almost care where you are, Duke uh, to UCLA to Syracuse to Michigan State to Florida to wherever. And to win, your three best players have to play pretty consistent. Our most consistent player has been Brandon Dawson, and we've had a little inconsistency. And so then you start reaching for Brent Forbes or Elvin Ellis or this guy or that guy to do more. And, uh, you know, again, it's nothing you can hide. Your best player's got to play well. Travis Trice is, uh, you know, was leading this league, I think, at one point, in three-point shooting or pretty close to it, in the high 40s for most of the preseason. Okay, and Denzel was above him, and now they're down in the 32s. And, um, you know, they're, they've already proven over time, it wasn't one game or three games, that they're good shooters. And you just got to get it back, you know. I mean, uh, oh, hell, I'll never forget when John Smoltz couldn't throw a strike because he came in and talked to Chris Hill about time when he couldn't make free throws. You know, it, it happens. And uh, But thank God for me, two of my hardest workers – are those two guys. So I think they're going to work their way out of it. And BJ really has continued to move up. If not in games and practices, um, he's really doing everything I can ask of him. And uh, I'm going to ask a little bit more. But, but yeah, you know, Trav's got to – he's got to play well. <laughs> and, and a lot of times with him playing well, you got to make shots because he is a shooter. And that's why it's hard to be a point guard that's a shooter and a point guard. I'm going to switch gears a little bit for the last question. I wonder if you got to know Dean Smith at all. I have any uh, memories of him. You know,
I did get to know Dean Smith a little bit and, uh, you know, I was involved in my first Sweet 16 against them and my second game of my career against them when Dick Vitale had that infamous, you know, he got me off the floor in Hawaii to tell me that uh, I just wanted to tell you something. And in the bottom of the ticker, it said, uh, Dean Smith, you know, 795 wins, Tom Izzo won. And he says, uh, good luck today. And he started laughing, you know. And 20 minutes later, we were 20 down, come to think of it. But uh, so that's where my Dean Smith, you know, other than through Judd and getting to know him a little bit. And I was with him in California a couple times for Wooden Award things. And, uh, you know, I I think they said it best, you know. I, I, I didn't really know all the stuff that he's done in society. He's done such a, a lot of great things. Um and helping the barriers that we've had to deal with. And uh, so he's not just a great coach and a good person and a guy who did it the right way, but he's he's also a guy that reached out beyond that, and yet nobody knew about it because he was, uh, I think, had, had incredible humility. And so I talked to Roy last two, three years. He was definitely dropping. Nobody knew much, but it was a tough time for him, and if there's... Anything that's considered a blessing, uh, I'm glad he's gotten a chance to go out with his dignity and, and the way he wanted it. And uh, we'll be saddened, I guess, as a profession to lose a, an icon, but uh, appreciative of what he gave to the game, or what he gave to his players, and, and I think what he gave to society. You know, yeah, you have former players, you know, and you do go to, you know, you might go to outside guys. I mean, you know, every this day and age we've got a lot of pills that fix a lot of things you know a lot of things <laughs> but i think uh i think the best pill there is is the working pill you know and i i think that you go through stages when you're a great shooter or a great free throw shooter i think stage one is i'm great i've already worked on it i've done it and then when you struggle a little bit you do not want to – the reason I'm being so upfront about our free throw shooting is the biggest problem anybody has in any disorder when you're struggling is can you admit that you got a problem? Can you admit that you got a problem? And, and when you admit that you got a problem, you can either – you can take a pill, you can get some help, or you can try to work your way through it. To me, the next way is work your way through it. And then – you resort to whatever you got to resort to, but um, I just I got too. Much, I do have a lot of confidence in some of the guys missing them, and in Dawson and Schilling's case, uh, they have worked diligently for a month now, where they're just. I mean, every day. I mean, Dawson has a class here now. He comes in, I think, at eleven or eleven thirty because he doesn't have many classes because he's a senior and he's all but graduated and. So we made it. He has a class. He's got to watch a little film. He's got to shoot free throws with Mike every day. And he has improved enormously. And so then there's a little bit of it when game time comes. Yeah. But, I mean, he has improved enormously. I mean, I feel for him. And uh, he's tough enough. He'll get through it. And if he does, we're going to be a better team and, and a lot better team, I think. We did, and I just looked at that today. I said, oh, 04, oh, 05, and, you know, got us to a Final Four, too, you know, and, and uh, it's, it is interesting. I mean, I, I, I won't lie to you. I'm going back and looking at all those things. I'm looking at the players we had. What were they shooting? What did they do? You know, some have called back, and, you know, you try everything, but I don't want to jump the gun on what to try until I make sure that some guys that refuse to – understand they're struggling a little bit, get in here and work on it. Because that, to me, is the best way to remedy the problem. If it was a broken shot and their elbow was out and all that, I'd go with it. But that's the best way to me to remedy it. And, and uh, so we're – I can promise you it's something that's on our minds. And I can promise you this, if that changed – we'd be talking a lot differently right now. I mean, and I'm not talking 
shooting 75% as a team. I'm just giving me the worst in my era, and we got three more wins easy. Brought Johnny in that time. Johnny came in and talked. It was good. Anything else, guys? Thanks, guys.